Well, hello and welcome back, everybody, to the CSC Challenger Series Division 2 fourth place match. A battle of legends is about to occur between two legends at Legends. I'm Nick Deshera, joined by Sean Green for this one. Sean, how's it going, my man? That was top notch. Top notch, Nick. Um, you did start with well, but other than that, it was great. Uh, loved everything about it. Man, it's going to be a great battle. We got two Minnesotans. Uh, duking it out for a spot in the uh third place match this is for six hundred dollars uh whoever loses gets 600 bucks whoever wins guaranteed at least a thousand dollars so there is some money on the line two friends uh battling it out on the aki i can't ask for more bud yeah and this is a strange occurrence for us at the csc both players playing out of the same location it's going to be really interesting to see how that dichotomy affects this long format match especially because the crowd will probably be divided behind them and legends has been turning up a good crowd so i'm really excited to see how this one turned out i think there's a little bit closer than some people are expecting this one to be yeah i'd agree with that i think a lot of our viewers know Brett Hollanday very well as a former Division II champ, and Corey Beck, more of a the newer um, guy on the scene in the CSC at least. But we've seen him on the stream already do extremely well against a very tough opponent. Opponent, so um, I think anything goes. And I'm just gonna counter your point. I think all the people at Legends are just rooting for a good match. 
right? Even Gina Holiday, um, even Corey's significant other, they're all going to be rooting for um, each other to have a good time. It's a friendly atmosphere. They're going to be friends. I just think that it might actually slow down the pace of the match a little bit. Why do you say that? Just, you know, I feel like I always throw faster uh, remotely uh, because I'm already kind of like at the line as the board switches and throwing those three darts ready to go. Whereas if you're walking back and forth with your partner and all that, it it could be uh, just uh, it's not going to be too terribly much slower. It's just going to feel like a little bit of a slower, more normal pace that we're used to for darts. Well, that's going to be interesting, and we're going to have to look out for that and seeing how it affects the dichotomy. But getting into it tonight, competitor number one, Corey Beck, playing out of, well, Legends, of course, uh, playing for 30-plus yep. years with a 4.6 MPR, a 56% win rate, and throwing the Shot Celt Claymore's 20 grams. Last time we saw him play on the stream was against Mike Scarborough, where he lost in a tiebreaker. Mike Scarborough is currently your King C holder. Yeah, and that's what I mean. Corey played extremely well, pushed Mike to a last league decider, just came out on the other side of that. But, um, yeah, Corey's, Corey's going to be a tough competitor. The only problem that Corey's going to face tonight is that his opponent, Brett, knows everything he can know about him. So let's look at Brett Hollanday, owner of Legends Bar. Uh, there, has been playing for 17-plus years. I was throwing that 4.72 NPR, um, 58%. 58.5% win rate, throwing some darts from the 90s, uh, which is always nice to know. Um, but yeah, again, former Division II champ. He has 45 nine marks with four white horses, 121 seven marks, 135 five marks, and 98 games played. Uh, he lost the very first match and has rolled through the loser side to this moment. If he happens to win, he will be the second person to lose the first match and then roll the way through the loser side. The last one to do that was Chris Watson. So, uh, Let's make some history tonight. First time playing with both partners at the same streaming bar. And uh, I'm ready to go, bud. You ready to go? Yeah. yeah. I'm extremely excited to see this one. I know these guys were uh, trying to get the bit to really get this going, and uh, <laughs> they're going to be having some fun with it tonight. They're going to be putting on a show for everybody in the room and everybody outside the room. Yeah, it's going to be a great time, guys. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. We are... About to get rolling. Nick, I'm going to put you on the spot right away. What's your final scoreline prediction? Well, scoreline prediction, I'm going to go ahead and take Corey Beck in a 9-7. Uh, that's going to be my uh, direction there. And I actually pulled a few people in a group chat that I'm part of on Facebook. Uh, since Will's not here, for your over-unders tonight on 9 marks, they put 13 and a half was the group consensus. All right. I wasn't a part of that group, but that's fine. Um, no need to, <laughs> I guess, do that. Um, I'm going to take the over on the nines, first and foremost. And then I'm also going to take Brett Hollanday in this one. I think he continues to roll my final score line, nine to six, Brett Hollanday. So we'll see if the owner of Legends in his hometown or in his home bar can, uh, can get, get some good, uh, good matches on the board. 81 scored there opening here for Corey, but if you've never watched before, let's go over the format and specific rules of the CSE Challenger Series. It is a race to nine, best of 17 legs, double elimination style tournament, all cricket with a three cork or three dart count up uh, to start the match. The loser of the previous leg will start the next leg after that. As you see, Corey does get the start. If either player is down three or more legs, they will continue to go first until the deficit is reduced to two legs. That's the PPD player advantage rule. And if we go the distance and we go for speed, Players will cork for start in the last leg decider. I, I've, I've always done in the background to make fun of Will, and I wasn't even ready for it this time. I know. Shame I know. I can on me. I'm curious to see. Last time we saw Brett, he played against Jake Smith, uh, and no, Jake did not bring his A game, and he'll admit that. Um, Brett was playing completely sick, um, and it was under the weather. I, I almost feel like he would have to be excited to kind of be on the other side of that and just play a match where he doesn't have to worry about the sniffles halfway through. It's probably true. Yeah, sorry, my child is crying on the other side of the door here, so awesome. That's actually Will Stewart, fun fact. <laughs> no, he's uh, he's not crying in Vegas. <laughs> 
probably uh, having a pretty good time. Excited to be out there for NDA Team Dart. So just to give you guys a little rundown this weekend, NDA Team Dart coverage on USA Darts. But also, you will still have All-Star Triples on a Saturday for the Part of Sprouting Darts page. So please watch out for that. Jeff McMahon will actually be taking the reins on production there, as, of course, I will not be available. And I'm really excited to see. I think, Sean, you're going to be helping out with that as well, as well a little bit there. So excited to uh, yep. kind of see from a different perspective. One of the only PPD shows I've ever missed since working for him. Well, well, happy to miss you. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We, obviously, it's going to be a different uh, beast for Jeff. I don't even know if he's ready for it. Um, we'll see kind of how it goes. And uh, hopefully it runs smoothly and we don't have any issues, which let's just knock on wood right now because even the best tend to have those issues from time to time. And luckily for you, you know every, the ins and outs of everything to where you know kind of how to fix all those. But um, Jeff's going to be kind of going on the fly there. So hoping for the best. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, always great to work with Ryan um, and bring some great coverage to PPD Nationals. Absolutely. Well, these guys coming out of the gates, they opened up pretty big, but you can see it's regressing into that mid four range at the moment. I really believe because of their history together, because of how long they've known each other um, and how long they played against or with each other. Uh, we're going to see the best out of both of them tonight. It's going to be almost like as if they're just having a night hanging out, playing darts. I think they're going to kind of forget how much money's on the line. Yeah. I'm going to respond to Richard here real quick. Richard, um, yeah, Richard Tyler Hensey is waiting on the winner of this match because he is because he lost the King Seat match. He's playing for the third place match. Uh, so this is the fourth place match to get to that one. Um, you mentioned it already with NDA and Team Dart and PPD Nationals, but also the CSC will not be happening next Monday and Wednesday. The week will be taken off, which actually is crazy because I'm also not having a show on Tuesday night. So um, for like a whole week, I don't I'm not doing commentary. It's going to be weird. <laughs> Get a little R&R &R in there. Yeah. And just so you guys know, those matches will not be played. They will be postponed as well. Yeah. So just to clarify that. Now, nah, let's just play them all. You know what, guys? The finals played. You missed it. It was it was great. <laughs> Good matchup. Good matchup. We actually just did like a private viewing of the stream. It was wonderful. I'm not going to lie. There was a time where I thought about doing a little watch parties for like non main CSC matches on all like people that were playing on Thursdays or Fridays doing like little watch parties. But then I was like, ah, I don't want to like offend anybody by not spreading the love. But it's definitely an idea we've tossed around in the back rooms before. Yeah, we don't need to do too much. All right. <laughs> um, Keith asking, what am I going to do? Be doing with all my free time? Well, um, Throughout the next week, we don't need to get into specific de details or anything like that, but uh, throughout the next week, I'm going to be filming uh, my scenes for the movie, so that'll be a lot of fun. I'm um, looking forward to that. Excited, nervous, but um, mostly excited. It's it's a great group of people, and um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I do see uh, Thomas Cooper in here saying, uh, Nick, uh, taking a break, Nick, to catch up on some movies. Uh, well, I've nope. been meaning to work on that, but the Fallout show came out, and I am obsessed. That is one of my favorite video game series that's ever been made, and the show is phenomenal. That's on Amazon Prime, not sponsored, but God, I, this is so good. Oh, Rich, no, no big deal, bud. Um, yeah, no, you're going to be uh, hanging out in Vegas, so no time, no time for movies for you. Um, you'll be working that crazy schedule with Nick. I'm just kidding. It's a great schedule. And then, uh, spend some time probably on Fremont street. I'm not gonna, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, you, you I, that's always I, a go to I travel around. Uh, honestly, the casinos are not scared of me. The buffets are. So that, that's usually what I spend my free time there uh, doing. Uh, no, but I, I always have a good time going out to uh, Vegas. Although I will say that this trip's always one of the longer feeling ones out of all of them. As Corey Beck gets leg number we'll one under leg way. number one. 4.80 from Corey Beck right out the gate. It's a hole to throw. But it's one nothing, and we are off and running. Ladies and gentlemen. All you got to do is leave a comment in our chat, hit the like button on our Facebook page to be entered in tonight's live stream giveaway brought to you by A to Z darts.com. Tonight's draft winner will receive the Nathan Aspinall Echo Soft Tip Darts in 18 grams. 
It's featuring a titanium nitrate coating, adding to the Aspinall Barrel's new sleek and sexy design. So you got to do is leave a comment or chat, hit that like button on our Facebook page to be entered in for your chance to win those sleek and sexy darts from Nathan Aspinall. I'm pretty sure Jen Mounts put that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Jen put that in the the sleek and sexy, just so I had to say it over and over again. I mean, honestly, I thought you were just talking about yourself. Well, the sleek part should have given that away. (laughs) See, Corey here started off pretty big, but you can see Brett doing a good job maintaining that control of the high ground and getting rid of the 19s. Does leave the shot for Corey. Will he take the shot, though? Stays there. Um, Rich, I said that he would, if he does get all the way back to the finals and win, I didn't say that if he wins this match, they're in the finals. Uh, by the way, guys, Legends has a legendary glitch in their camera system where it likes to zoom out um, and unfocus, which is impressive. So uh, Nick says he's tried everything you can possibly <laughs> think of to to make that issue go away. So um, uh, uh, not going to happen. Did take some time work on it. I did let our camera guy know about it as well. The guy that specifically works on these is uh, they're not traditional broadcast cameras that we use for this because it has to be basically online 24 seven. So we'll look into it. But yeah, if you see that, just pretend like something crazy is happening in the background and we're trying to censor it or something like just like fill fill in the blanks. (laughs) Some say feature, not glitch. Yeah, Thank you, Bert. Bert in the chat getting it right. Uh, do you see Chris asking my bobblehead will not uh, will have a mustache? Uh, probably not, but it will have dyed hair. And it doesn't exist. Uh, will was the only one special enough to get a bobblehead. So, um, you know, we know who Jen's favorite is. That's fine. That is well, what it is. Do you remember what she did last time uh, Vegas came around to Will? She no. uh she uh gave him a lordship and boy did that oh, yes. did that, did that go right to the head oh no, man th- that was that was during the summertime that was when he was over in uh England. oh yeah that's right it was right before that you you are right but she loves pulling these little stunts on Will she said it's an early birthday present guys his birthday's in August <laughs> for the record so she's really yep. on top of it this year all right Brett down in points had the lead early on and he's just gonna take care of it right here oh. Still yet to have a nine, but these guys are going sevens after sevens after sevens. Yeah, some really solid play and really solid strategy from both these guys for the most part. Not really making any clerical errors and executing efficiently on the turns that they are shooting, except for that one. Corey leaving a big door opener for Brett here. Do you know what a 10 ounce can of Coke is called? Uh, Not enough. A mini soda. <laughs> For the record, guys, Sean's the one laughing at that joke. And I'm laughing at Sean uh, laughing at that joke. Oh, that was great. That was, thank we're gonna, you. We're, it's going downhill from here, buddy. Be here all night long. Ashley Roberts, you are welcome. Thank you for listening in. You got a lot of great comments in our chat. Let everybody know where where you're tuning in from. We'd love to see that, everybody. Corey, very interesting there. Wanted to hit the bull first before going for the 1615 transition. Didn't inquire the bull. Decided to go for the 16s and didn't really get much of anything other than the singular bull. So kind of a lax round. Doesn't particularly hurt that last start from Brett, though. Pretty much seals him out in front for this leg. We got Topeka, Kansas, Greenwood, Wisconsin, Buffalo, New York, and Naps, Indiana. Rachel's at Legends Bar watching the Legends themselves uh, play some darts. And you see uh, Corey kicking himself on dart, too. Goes right back to the bull. How about Chatham, Ontario, Canada for Sean Bordeaux? Or Bordeaux? Depending on how you pronounce it. I think you nailed it. But either once... Or the second time you said it. That's fair. 
Hollandaise gets it done and there. One to one score line. Hollandaise gets the first one on the board, and uh, it's one to one score line. You just said that. 4.85. Rome, New York, Mostyn, Wisconsin, Bad River, Wisconsin. Yeah, Ashley, it is Brett Hollandaise's bar that he owns, and Corey has been playing out of there this entire time. So the, they are very good friends. I'm sure they started the CSC, just excited for both of them to be in the field. And now they're not as excited to have them both in the field as boom goes the Minnesotan. Corey Beck with the first one on the board. Yeah, it's always fun to see when you're playing like all-star triples or nationals and you've been playing people remote all day. So you've been, since there's no microphones on the board, you can sometimes celebrate a little louder. You talk your strategy out loud and then all of a sudden you have to play somebody that's in the same bar. That's happened a few times to a couple teams, I'm sure. And when that happens, you have to remind yourself, oh, wait, hold on. They're right in front of me. I can't celebrate like normal. This is a, a normal remote yeah. thing. It's Corey Beck just paving along the path here. Yeah, and that really does happen, right? There's a difference between playing remotely and in person, and it's a really interesting thing. You can't talk to yourself. You can't really um, yell at yourself in the middle of your throw or after your throw. Uh, the emotion that you can show, the trash talk that you can do um, to the camera, to the TV, uh, you can't do that anymore. Although they are best friends, they might be doing that anyway. But um I don't know if they're best friends, by the way. I'm just making that up. Um, they're long-standing friendships. They've known each other for 15-plus years, at the very least. Well, there you go. So, uh, so yeah, they're having to kind of keep that all inside, which if it was Mike Maloney, it'd be uh, he'd have to play completely different. He'd have to think completely different than he normally does when he plays online. All they does get some points on the board. He will not go quietly into the night on this game, but Corey's just been like kind of leading the direction here. And you can see they're having a little banter back and forth right there and having some <laughs> fun with it. <laughs> I, think I love it. Brett exit exited the other way that he normally had. Or yeah, that, or uh, Brett was like, Hey, I got some points on the board suck it. Um, which is what I would have said there as I walked back down this many. That's like every every 465 of you plus whoever's in chat right now. If you're throwing at the dartboard, exit to the right. <laughs> Three in the black. Well, look at Brett that. Day. So you're saying there's a chance. Corey's going to say probably Luke's, not. Luke says he got his broken tip out of the out of the three for him. So he's happy oh. about that. There we go. Uh, Rick, I know he plays just fine, but I I wasn't making a comment about his online play versus his in-person play. I just said that he would have to think differently as far as what he does there. And Brett gets the point lead. Yeah, actually crazy. Three of the last four competitors in this bracket are Minnesotans. Huh. I, you know what? Uh, that's actually is pretty crazy. I didn't think about that. Did not think about that. We've seen Wisconsin domination, Florida, and Texas domination. Those states have all had their times, but good on Minnesota for making some great representation. Just shows and the you quality have all of play. over in Division One. Illinois, Florida, and uh, Missouri. Andrew in there from Messina, New York. How are you doing? Holds a throw all the way along so far in this one. Nothing surprising yet, if you ask me. The only thing surprising so far is uh, Brett dipping down into a 3-8 there. But that was more of a slow start and a very strong one from Corey. And just kind of was ready to go on to the next one, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. Mike Scarborough says, I hope Brett wins the next two weeks. He's the only one that is not looking to uh, return the favor that he put on him earlier this season. <laughs> Again, uh, Brett Hollanday lost to Nick East, who lost to Corey Beck last week, um, the very first week of the CSC Challenge Series Division Two, and has rolled back to this point. 
and Brett's winning season that he had, I believe it was season three. Mm-hmm. Um, he rolled through the competition. He was dominating the averages over a 5.0, a little bit Tyler Henze esque uh, at the beginning of the season, but he rolled through the entire season doing that. Didn't lose a single match. And that was the difference. That, that was actually season four, now that I think about it. So okay. yeah, season three was Aaron Ham. That was the only final we missed yep. where there was no cameras available, uh, which thankfully you're has right. not been anywhere near an issue n- anymore. But uh, you're right. Brett really wants to get that moniker of being the first two-time winner in D2. I mean, who wouldn't? Vice versa. I want to be honest. Corey Beck was not happy with how the Scarborough match ended in the interview that we'll hear later on. You kind of get a little of the indication of that, and he really wants another shot. And if he wants that shot, he has to not only beat uh, his friend right in it there, but then the young prodigy in the next week as well. So tough road ahead for either of these guys. Did you tell him to pick on someone with you with the same amount of hands as him next time? You know, Sean, I left it to you. <laughs> I figured you'd get there. Just saying. As uh, I'll leave it to you to fix the zoom out. Uh, I I don't, don't even know why I try anymore, guys. I, I I can do whatever right. As soon as one thing breaks, it's Nick's fault. That's it. I'm keeping the mustache. <laughs> hey, Terry's from Minute to Walk, Wisconsin. Thank you, uh, Making a Murderer, for giving me that pronunciation. <laughs> Is that really why you nailed that one? That's kind of funny. I like that. Uh, yep. Like that one. Terry knows what Terry knows what I'm talking about. Gets all the time, I'm sure. Good play from both these guys. It's like Corey Beck trying to give himself an outside chance. Wow. He's going to leave himself the outside chance and forcing Brett to have to hit the hat here. Three three. Four four three. Doesn't get it. Whoop. This is the opening. He left himself this shot. Yeah, he three, has three, to hit three, three. it. So he needs three. Huge moment here. Oh, that first starts. Gonna have to. Oh, what a cover. Gets it. And he takes it out. A 4 8 3 to steal the leg from Holland Day. And is now a 3 to 1 lead here for Corey Beck, getting some separation early. Yeah, first break of throw of the match. Good stuff there for Corey Beck and Brett Hollanday. Going to be kicking himself a little bit. And we kind of saw this in his last match that he played against Jake Smith. His bowls were not as sharp as you would typically expect, especially considering how well he's throwing otherwise. Um, and he, he, he's one holding. He's just hitting on the outside. And if he collects that dart and fixes it in, there's more legs that he would pick up, especially like in that Jake Smith match we saw. Ashley asking if we're going to be at Chicago next month. I will be out there in Chicago next month uh, hanging out. It'll be my first time out there for the Chicago Bullshooter. Excited for that event. I'm going to guess you've done some commentary on Derek there. If he's uh, in the chat, Division One team at Whammo, uh, third place two years in a row. Oh, so that certainly means that both of us have done commentary on him. There we go. Yeah, Waymo coming around the corner, too. Excited for that one. I will probably not be there in person, but hopefully we'll get to fill in remote for a little bit of that just because I had so much fun out there. A little too much fun, some would say, but I had fun in <laughs> Wisconsin. You got your steps in, that's for sure. <laughs> and then some. <laughs> uh, how about Pops? What's up, boys? Watching from Goddard, Kansas. Uh, Will's dad in the chat listening in. Probably happy to stay this time since Will's not here. Brett just going to try to continue to push Corey. Corey coming out a little bit flat after the last two legs being a 505 and a 483. So this will be his best moment in this leg to try to save it. We'll be pounding a number and hoping Brett misses. Hey, let's give a huge shout out to Miss Jennifer Locke in the chat saying good evening, guys from Rockford. Jennifer sent us at uh, To The Point Streaming some insomnia cookies yesterday before our show. Uh, those Oof. were clutch. 
Yeah, that sounds phenomenal. That's second best cookie company other than uh, Crumble that for chains. But really good cookies. Baked is pretty good, too. I never had never that had one. Baked, uh, never had that one. It's called Half Baked. Um, they're phenomenal. 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 All right, Brett Hollanday. Three bowls needed. Not a lot of pointing happening here. At first starts a bit of a hanger. And I think he had realized a maybe a tip broke. Yeah, just got to readjust. You can see Corey asking if he needs anything, which is kind of funny when your opponent's about yep. to hit a, uh, w- a potential winning dart here to even uh, get uh, back into the mix, I should say. As you say, here, let me fix that for you. And then you throw it across the bar. <laughs> well, he gets it done. 4.33 will do. And Brett Hollandy makes it three to two. Corey will go first here in this next leg. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, all month long, A to Z Darts is featuring the Emirate Dart Series from 180, plus a special raffle. If you purchase the Dart of the Month, you automatically get entered into the raffle to win a set of 180 Magic Matt Bowen Darts. The raffle ends May 1st, and the winner will get their choice of soft tip. <coughs> excuse me, 19 grams or steel tip 23 grams. Izzy Darts is also having an exclusive sale with discounts on all Hero Imperial Diamond Darts. Why is my throat closing up on me right this second? You're okay. Uh, Sean's going <laughs> to take a quick breather here. Sorry. <laughs> and the Winmore Clear Zone Dart Mat that you won't want to miss. While you're at it, show your support for world champion Luke Humphreys with the newest champion collection. Or browse the Target, like I'm seeing like stars, like start to shine. <laughs> what is Target happening? April product drop. Just head on over to azdarts.com for all your turning needs. Wow. That was, that was great, Sean. That, one of the better ad reads we've heard. That was, ugh. <laughs> well, you know, when you get as many gigs as you do and you've been streaming as much as you have, I think this week off will be good for the vocal cords. I think I'm going to need those tomorrow or maybe the rest of this week for some some reason or another, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, this As, is something. Uh, Corey. Trying to see what he can do. We'll stay with the point lead here, but Brett has a bit of an opportunity that he can take advantage of. We've got Nebraska in there. Waukesha, Wisconsin. Love the streams from Andy Douglas, which is how I'm just going to assume he says streams, which is wonderful, by the way. Travis says, can't wait to watch it and listen to you guys in Vegas. I, You and Nick are always going to kill it, or you and Will are always going to kill it um, out there. It's going to be a great time. Yeah, it, it's, it's always a fun time in Vegas. Uh It'll, it'll be good. it'll be good week of work, and I, I think we're going to be trying some different stuff uh, with uh, some of the outside of the mainstream content as well, especially with uh, Jim Mounts and I. So really curious to see nice. how that goes. Corey looking to get the, some 18s and some points on the 18s. Not going to get a whole bunch. Yeah, what Holland is doing exceptionally well in this leg is just recovering after getting the throw broken, right? And uh, the last leg, he played pretty solid. And in this one, he's Ooh. continuing to raise that bar, forcing Corey to kind of feel the heat because that vantage that he went out of his way to earn is about to go away potentially and be chalk again. It is incredible how often these guys are hitting the first two trebles and then not hitting the third. But not that time. Corey Beck, boom goes the dynamite. The second of the evening, both of them from him. And he leads three to two. Oh, but what an answer. It is. And he does. Gives him the holiday Holiday sauce. Oh, dear dear Lord. I stole that from chat. Thanks, Sunshine Lollipops. What's up, Sean? It's his top game so far. I hope you're doing well in Scotland, my friend. Another one. (laughs) Back to back to back. Nine. Marks, they had one total, and Brett ruined that with the with the fat two there. Yeah, that was an impressive run. It really just shows the testament to these guys' ability and their ability to hang. I mean, you have to remember Brett Holiday, the only person in CSC Division Two history to ever average a five zero. So uh, we got close to that, and uh, 
temporarily past that with Tyler Hensey, although he has not had a finishing average at the 5-0 range yet for the season. Oh, this is getting a little dicey here. Big last. Oh, look at Sean. Triple boom goes the dynamite there. You're not wrong, Sean. And the dynamite is uh, exploding all the way in Scotland. Ooh, and one of that killer dart in the 19s there would have actually been an interesting time to go at it because it would have left a nine mark shot for Brett. And Brett really just wants to get these 17s away from Corey ASAP. Well, that's not going to help. Well, any that might be true, but then again, because you're saying it, I don't want to believe it. How about Chewy in the chat saying, what's up, fellas? Outstanding drop as usual. Got to throw the East Coast accent on there. That was not East Coast. Hold on. No, I can't do it. Hey. You know what? You're doing great. Uh, Corey in these 17s right now is ridiculous at the moment. He broke the camera. And that zoom out at the right <laughs> time. Boom goes the dynamite and boom goes the camera zoom. And on the other end here, Brett just going to, he's throwing phenomenal in this leg. It drops just below a five there because of the bulls. But Gory just doing everything right. And when you're finding that number, sometimes it takes precedent to close them out earlier than you otherwise would because Gory showed exactly why that worked for him. 5.49. Woo. That'll do. That'll do. And he takes a 4-2 to two lead here on Brett Hollanday. Brett will go first to try and make it 4-3 to three, heading into the break where we get our first duo interview. Uh, with both players there at the same time. Uh, I like this. Yeah, we, we've uh, Colton, tried. I am not. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, no please. I was going to say, Colton, uh, I'm not getting on a plane anytime soon, but Nick doesn't have to leave until Friday morning, so we're good. Yeah, that's exactly right. I was going to say, the one other time we tried to do two interviews at the same time was the ever so infamous uh Brandon Neal, Chris Watson, a trash talk WWE interview that we did. And boy, was that one of the funniest things that I think we put out. I, I love that interview to this day. Oh, look at those darts. Yeah, the only thing that that doesn't really. Uh, Not quite well, I can't the say the middle part of that there, Ryan. I actually have a pretty good Boston accent. And you just, I just got to get into it, but I'm not going to yeah, do it right baseball. now. Khakis. Both players in the sixes right now. And Corey Beck with the point lead. Brett's got a lot of work to do. Nice do, hundo. Uh, do have a challenge for everybody in chat. We have over 500 people tuning in. Um, if you guys are at home and of age, take a drink every time I start a sentence with well tonight. Oh, man. Why would you want to kill 500 people? <laughs> <laughs> I like this from Brett right here. He has the top uh, top real estate. He needs to just focus on defending it. You can see he was quick to take that turn down, knowing he had the insurance of the 18. But I don't like that shot in this scenario when he could just be pressing the advantage against a very hot-handed Corey Beck. Steven says, no, thanks. I like my liver. <laughs> Brian says, I'm already drunk just thinking about it. Gary said then, that. <laughs> well, Gary's going to die. Uh, Gary, I don't know you very well, but it, it, it will be sad to watch you go. Everyone say bye, Gary. <laughs> Sean says, it's 2.36 a.m. here. You saying, well, every time would have me in bed by three. <laughs> Good stuff. Oh, man, you're getting trash talked all the way from Scotland. I love it. Uh, I respect it. Infamy or fame, I don't care. 
you can see Corey doing an excellent job of attacking the high ground and getting uh, some points on the board there. I mean, really kind of punishing Brett for not scoring up on him a little bit more. You kind of have to weather the storm if you're Brett with Corey. They're both going to play very similar levels of darts, and they both have a high gear. Uh, and right now, Corey's just running with it. If, if I was Corey, I wouldn't want a break to happen right now. No, I mean, he's sh shooting well at the same time. If he goes in the break up five to two, he'll feel real good about that break every time. Yeah, certainly the case here. Hollande does recover on those 17s there. I, I, I want to say that, no, he's not far off. Well, 4.7 versus a 5.1 right. is not a big difference, but it's more so the momentum of everything. I'm more so basing that off. No, it, that's understandable. Great last start from Corey. To get back the point lead. Hey, how about this? It is Carver's first time watching. Loves it so far. Carver, usually we have a way worse second commentator on here. <laughs> um, so... Just know that next time, don't keep your hopes up that high. Yeah, welcome to the stream. <laughs> Kachina says, uh, on the plus side, if I die tonight, I won't have to go to work tomorrow. Hey, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's tomato, sometimes it's tomato. Just depends on how you look at it. Yeah, yet I keep it up with potatoes. It's a half glass full kind of answer right there. Uh, Will is in Las Vegas, so he is lost. In Vegas. Um, in Vegas. He's probably having zero concerns about the CSC Challenger Series. Probably has no idea we're doing this right now. Well, he is a different time zone. There's a good chance that that actually is true. <laughs> yeah. No, he, he uh, trusts us with the reins on uh, all of our viewers uh, at USA Darts on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you guys for tuning in over there. But we are also live on Partners Promoting Darts on Facebook and YouTube. So four platforms that we are on. Uh, Caleb asking when Vegas coverage starts. So that will be starting Friday evening. I don't know the exact time, but if you go to the USA Darts page, I'm sure they'll have it there. Yeah, it's okay. He's just working it. No big deal. Mark, um, <laughs> the answer is this is the first time we've ever had this. As there's a little walk and turn. Whoopsies. As uh, Corey tried to walk that one on in. Look good. And finds it on dart three anyway. A 4.90 to head into the break with a 5-2 to two lead on Brett Hollanday. Well, so far, um, I'm wrong on my predictions, and Nick is correct. So that's got to change here at some point. Stay tuned, guys. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after these great interviews from our two players. Uh, you're going to want to hear them, and then we'll be back with more right after that. I'm always right, Sean. Well, hello everyone. I am Nick DeShera and I get the pleasure of introducing you to our competitors tonight for the fourth place match in Division 2 of the CSC Challenger Series. We have Corey Beck and Brett Hollanday and welcome back to the show, gentlemen. Well, we're excited to have you. Uh, starting off with you, Brett. You and Gina own Legends Bar, which is going to be the bar you're both playing out of tonight against each other. Um, did you ever envision when we started up the CSC and we got the cameras in the bar that there's a possibility that you could be playing against somebody inside your own bar on the stream? And does that change anything for you about how you're going to approach tonight's match? No, it doesn't change anything for the match, but deep down, I think both of us were thinking, hopefully we play each other in, well, obviously the king's seat. But we didn't get there, but playing for fourth is good enough, I think. I would certainly say so, considering how tough the field is. Um, and now Legends Bar has quite the crowd these last few times. And, Corey, when you were playing Mike Scarborough and you got down to the tiebreaker, everyone was going crazy. There was people riding horses. It was phenomenal. Uh, how was it playing in front of the crowd, and how was that match for you in general? <laughs> I mean, the crowd is whatever, you know. I, I've played enough tournaments over the years where people, noise, all that stuff is, it is what it is. Um, the, the, the match, well, <laughs> you know, a little disappointed, I'm not going to lie. You know, I had a couple opportunities. Didn't turn out the way that I had hoped, but uh, here we are. <laughs> well, you guys are still both in the mix currently. Uh, 
Brett, you had a dominant performance in your match against Jake Smith. Um, honestly, you played phenomenal. You kind of had a good foothold in the whole time, but we heard you were under the weather in that match. Can you talk us through that uh, whole scenario? Yeah, I was sick probably for the two days leading up to it. I was not feeling well at all during the match. and I was hoping to get a good lead on him and then hold on. That was my biggest worry about the whole match. And I got a good lead on him and finished it off late, late in the game. But you got the job done. And uh, Corey, at this point in the bracket where you're at, the money increases with each win here. And of course, it gets you ever so close to your first finals appearance in the CSC Challenger Series. Do you ever think about that while you're playing? Does that ever run across your mind for better or worse? Um, while I'm playing, no. Um, after I'm playing, yeah, kind of. <laughs> You know, I mean, it was when I played when I played Mike. That was a thousand dollar match, and here I'm back at it, a thousand dollar match. So, you know, we'll see. Certainly, and Brett, you're the only defending champion left in Division Two of the CSC, uh, and nobody's ever actually won Division Two twice. Uh, do you think uh, that might add some extra motivation in tonight's match and in the rest of your run as well? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I'd love to win it again. I presume you guys are friends, right? Uh, you guys seem to get along fairly well. Uh, <laughs> yet <laughs> tonight, someone's going to end the other's run. How do you stay focused on playing someone that you're friends with and knowing that the crowd's going to kind of want both of you guys to win and knowing that that's not a possibility? Brett and I have played against each other for, soul oh Christ, 30 years, 20, 20 yeah, years? Yeah, off and on. on yeah. Off and on for since the early 90s early to mid 90s yeah and you know we we played against each other a lot we played with each other at times too you know we've we've been on teams over the years and he and i have played in tournaments uh we played the last uh toc tournament together actually um so it it is what it is you know it can it can definitely go either way um hopefully you know, hopefully we can give you a good show yeah yeah, certainly. Well, I don't think you guys are going to disappoint us at all. Uh, is there anything you guys want to say to your friends, fans, family, anybody else watching along? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, I just yeah. want to say thanks for all the support through all the people supporting the bar in, the, in our area. I appreciate that. Uh, a little special thanks to the coaching staff. Absolutely. Uh, and thanks to my family. Yeah. You know, and... and Myself, I guess, you know, obviously I would like to, I would like to thank my sponsor, uh, Dead Man Dart Supplies, um, Legends Bar, uh, Midwest Coin Concepts, um, just for giving us a place to actually do this, PPD, of course, for having the tournament, and mostly my wife and my daughter. Well, perfect, gentlemen. We're excited to have our first in-person CSC match here. So you guys would be face-to-face -face against each other. You're already face-to-face -face right now, and we're excited to see how this one pans out. So, gentlemen, we wish you both the best of luck in tonight's match. We're at Legends Bar, and you're watching the CSC Challenge Series. Nathan Aspinall, Echo, Soft Tip Darts. By the way, I've swapped out the stems and flights for the new K-Flex number two standard flight. Uh, originally only number six was available. Now we have number two in all colors and lengths. All right, 146 remaining. Oh, ho, ho. damn, that felt good. Echo has really expanded since it first came out as an exclusively soft hip range. Now we have a player edition that has remnants of Nathan's prior signature darts, notably the overall shape of the barrel and the milling, with the CNC milling in the front, nano grooves in the middle, finishing off with radial grooves in the rear, which to me feel the most aggressive. So if you have a widespread grip or a five finger hold like Nathan himself, I would recommend taking a look at this barrel. It's certainly a more affordable option than your typical PDC superstar signature dart. Take a look. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the CSC Challenge Series Division 2 fourth place match. Brett Hollanday 
currently down five to two to Corey Beck. The men from Minnesota are duking it out, and right now, early on, Corey Beck with the advantage. I'm Sean Green, joined by Nick Darachi Mustachioed Deshera. Nick, is this about what you were expecting in the first uh, first seven legs? I'm going to be honest. I expected it to be closer in as far as these legs spread here, but I did obviously have that leaning <laughs> towards Corey Beck after his performance against uh, Mike Scarborough. Looking at those averages after seven legs, Corey Beck, 4.69 average, so shooting pretty well there, right in range. But you can see Brett dipped a little lower, but not too low, 4.47. So not out of reach by any means. No, not at all. And Brad's been right there uh, just on the wires. I've kind of made the difference a little bit. Corey's hit a few more big, big, big numbers. But, um, yeah, at this point, still really anyone's ball game. But you can see the chaos. Everyone's starting to come back. They're kind of getting their spot. Uh, oh. I've been, I've been uh, proven wrong before, and I have might as well just say it again tonight. Uh, they are throwing at a very rapid pace. Like online versus this is about the same. Yeah, I think it's literally old habits for them, right? If you know somebody and playing with or against them for 15, 20, 30 years, uh, they're somewhere in that range of knowing each other for a very long time. Um, when you have that history and camaraderie with somebody, uh, it just kind of you click back into it. And I really do think this is the best case scenario for both of them. As far as just being able to have the ease of comfort, they're not really, at least Corey clearly is not thinking about the CSC too much at the moment. He's just thinking about throwing darts and hitting and Brett tailing close behind just wants to give it back to his buddy, you know, as Josh Hill uh, mentions the apple pies that are famous around there. Oh yeah. Being delivered to the table. <laughs> Sean, uh, Sorry, the fans friend. would like to know, what, are you going to make it through the stream or are you, uh, are you dying here? I mean, listen, every day I wake up is a, is a freaking miracle. So um, right now the miracle is still going strong, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, let me ask you, right? Because you are, so, we talk about these players that have to travel and do quick turnarounds for events. I mean, a couple years ago, you were just running the Tuesday Seed Show and maybe doing a stream at State or helping out with other streams in the past, but it was it was a big gaps in between. Nowadays, there's months where you're sh streaming more often than you're not streaming in a given month. I mean, how hard is that transition um, comparatively? Um, you're going to have to repeat the question. I am so sorry. <laughs> Sean, you... you, you, you Long story short, getting to the summary here, you travel, you travel a lot, and you commentate in a lot of different events. And yep. there's sometimes months where you commentate more than you don't. Um, that's yeah. not the same as it's been in the past. How is that for you? Like, what are some of the uh, cons, and what are some of the pros of doing something like that? Oh, the the pros are always that I'm first of all doing something different. So, CSE Monday Wednesday is always fun. It's a different remote stream with you two. Uh, Tuesday, I have the seed, which is with my two partners for two the point streaming. It's steel tip. It's one match that we kind of get to create and, and, and do a lot of creative things with. And then if I'm traveling on the weekends, it's either to do a really cool event somewhere or it's with the pro tour. Um, so the pros are definitely that I, I get asked all the time, man, you got to get sick of this. And I would, if it was constantly like streaming myself, right. Where, I'm averaging a 2.5, 275. <laughs> yeah, I get that. But like, man, with the, I got to th call a nine darter this weekend. And then on Monday, we had Jules versus Danny Baggish. I mean, they go to the last leg decider. Uh, you can't get sick of things like that. So those pros are endless. Um, it's great to get to know everybody and, uh, and meet all of, all of the people that I've been able to meet over the years. Um, the cons is obviously my family. Uh, you know, I have my oldest daughter who's still awake right the second, um, and not asleep. So my wife is out there being a rock star like always, but, um, without the support of her, this would not happen at all. So, um, huge shout out to my family for that. That's definitely the big con. I'm tired. I'm, I'm exhausted always, but, um, 
it's like a good exhaustion. I feel like I'm spending my time doing something that I that I want to do, that I'm good at, that I uh, I'm getting better at, and that I enjoy. So, as uh, Brett Hollanday makes it five to three, bud. Yeah, I mean that's an insightful answer because obviously we know we have some really good jobs when we get to do events like these, right? Um, and just any events, really, it's it's kind of insane. Uh, just as you and I are both Dart nerds and Dart fans, yep. uh, well before we ever got into a position of which we're at now. So, uh, it's it's kind of interesting. I feel like for some other people to hear, like kind of what goes into that, right? Uh, Josh L even asking uh, just now, question for you both: What's been your favorite event to commentate? And it's the repertoire and list is just getting longer. And I feel like Sean might say this last weekend, just because of the nine darter. I, I might be biased uh, in my own uh, pick of as well. So it, it's just fun. It's just fun. It definitely is. Um, it's it's a tough question that Josh is asking, right? Um, of course, getting to do the Continental Cup and Cross Border Dart Challenge is, is amazing. Um, getting to do Vegas this year was uh, super cool to do commentary for um, Fallon Cherick and uh, Simon Whitlock and uh, some PDC pros I don't normally get to do commentary for. Uh, but yeah, I, I will say overall, anytime I get to do commentary with John Part, no offense to any of my other co-commentators. He's just, uh, he's been doing it since 1995 as the, the best, uh, one of the best to ever do it. Uh, so anytime I get to, to work with a, a living legend like him, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. Booyah is also another one that's, that's huge. So, um, but yeah, I, I'm, I, John Part is going to trump everyone for me. Uh, I got to do commentary with Richard Ashdown too. That was also very special. So, yeah, I mean, those are – it's the people I get to work with that, that make it the most special. And that includes you, and that includes Nick – or you are Nick. And that includes Will, unfortunately. <laughs> um, Ryan, Gordon, Mark, any other people that I've been able to work with, my partners to the point streaming, uh, all make me better and sound better. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's a pretty fair answer. I, I honestly it's just sometimes it's those very specific memories and you you mentioned the people you work with for me it's also the interactions i have with uh fans right uh when yep. amani came up to me at dpfl uh 12 13 years old and says hey i want to eventually do what you guys do how do i get there and i said just start making content when i was 13 fun fact i found even my original youtube channel i have 200 videos of me playing minecraft with 20 views that uh, they still exist out there and i've made 200 videos of me just talking and talking and it actually ended up building up those fundamental skills, and those are the experiences we like the most. I will say the best playing experience, though, of all time will still be playing on your show, Sean. I had so much fun with that. That was ridiculously fun. Well, I'm happy to hear that. It wasn't a very long match. Um, yeah, because I, I sucked. That you played. <laughs> <laughs> we could just call it as it is. But uh, <laughs> No, but uh, that that definitely means a lot to, to know that out of you. Um, Asking best averages, best season averages. Um, mine's like a 3.19 and like a 30. It's not anything special. As Corey Beck takes out that one to make it six to three. Yeah, for me, my ending average of a season 4.1 and a 33 would be my, or sorry, 31 would be my highest season average for a league uh, for soft tip. Yeah, so not these level that, that we're talking about right now no. that we're pretending to know um, how these guys are thinking or doing their stuff. Um, we know all that just from, you know, watching good darts and talking to as many great players as we possibly can about the insights into the game as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, basically, we have to work extra hard because we don't have the uh, the living playing skills and playing situations, you know. Yeah, and, not, not everyone. Not everyone can be uh, Will Stewart. Well, and it's also the mentors around that, like, teach us the game. And uh, it's our job to just kind of take those teachings and basically reiterate them from smarter people. So I know a majority of my experience is Brett Hollanday hits a nine mark here. Um, Boom goes the dynamite. 
uh, was from listening to people like DJ Sayer and Gordon Dixon when I was first getting to the dart scene when I was still in high school or listening to like the USA dart streams back when Kevin Molifant uh, owned them. So like that, that, that's where that experience comes from playing with Kenny Doyle and getting his insights uh, for a season of league um, stuff like that. That that's what we try to transgress to you guys. We will never claim that we could do what these guys are doing consistently or debatably ever inconsistently. Big nine again. Brett Hollanday, boom goes the dynamite. He had to throw a 3.33 last leg and to kind of snap back into reality here. He knows that he can't get let this get out of hand. He is the more seasoned veteran as far as the CSC is concerned. And that's what it comes down to tonight is the CSC experience. Yeah, Chris, that's Chris makes a good point. He says, I work so I can play darts. I, I work so I can talk about darts, honestly. Um, but it's one of those things where with how much we do now, Nick and in, in the, in the community and all that, um, we're almost around darts more than the players are that play them. <laughs> um, which I mean, because we also love the game. So we're always playing the game too. Um, I, there's not a day that goes by. I don't throw darts, um, somehow, some way. Um, I just don't play a league because I don't have time for it. And, uh, don't play in those big tournaments because hopefully I'm doing commentary for him. Uh, so that's been kind of one of the other sacrifices. That, oh. That's been honestly a sacrifice that we've been fine taking. Oh. Is look at this. Oh, that would have left a Tried five to, to give three a on the bulls there. Corey, that was a very smart shot. I do think, especially with Brett's previous struggles on the bulls, that was a good gamble to take in that scenario because otherwise you're yep. down and out, but does not matter if Brett just gets it done there. 5.6 will do. Yeah, and I do want to point out that when you talk about Brett's struggles, he did hit three in the black earlier. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say struggles as far as just if, if you look, the range of his averages is a lot larger than normal. You don't average a That's 5 for a majority of a season in the past and have a 3-3 three, three and a 3-8 in your match repertoire, typically. Uh, we say that, but the first leg of Monday night also shows that anything can happen when both those players were hanging in the threes. Whew. Man, that last league decider is still something. Uh, I got questions about that last night. Boom goes the dynamite. Corey Beck. Number eight between these two. Stupid 13 and a half is going to be a good number. <laughs> um, <laughs> Josh, John, we will but, have uh, both. Yeah. Yep. Both of them. <laughs> Gina says, can I throw up? Now this is too stressful. Ah, oh, it's a good stress though. They're in it's the situation. A great shot the too. Stress. Corey the Beck that gets a boom. Goes that dynamite. Back to back nines to start off this leg. We had back to back nines from Brett Hollanday in the last one, and he's going to try and add another one here, and he does. Man, I'm telling you, it's contagious. It certainly is. Certainly oh, is. Oh, and he blocks the 16. How does he find this? Yep. You blew it. You ruined it. Now, nah, the Corey's just honestly, he's showing the higher gear so far. I mean, having uh, winning legs in the uh, five five range and the uh, mid of five range, just kind of hanging around there. I know I said the same thing twice. I was kind of just trying to roll through it. No. I, you know me, I don't listen to you. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Michael Walter is asking when we're going to stream something around North Carolina steel tip. Um, whenever you move back to Indiana, it would probably be the time I do that. Um, <laughs> Keith Williams asking or saying that you guys knowledge of the game and the players and their strategies has grown just in the last year. It, well, it, honestly, it's, it's, it's part of our, it's part of why we do what we do is to, to be better and to get better. Uh, so we appreciate that you acknowledge that uh, it's just we like to ask questions. And honestly, working with Danny Baggish last year at TOC opened my eyes more than really anything else. And if you didn't believe it opened his eyes, John Green never used the term high ground before it. And listen to how often I did not. We hear it now. But I haven't said it once tonight. So. 
Uh, it is. I know I've because I've taken over on that, but it, it's that's one of the best parts when we bring these players into the booth. I know I did it at a couple of different events, like when I was in Plover for Eagle Eye Sports. Um, just bring these players into the booth and having them explain their opinions on the shot because the game changes at each average level, and having the perspective of the levels of which we can obtain is so fascinating. Carver, you don't. No one likes a bragger, okay? Um, just got Taco Bell. Now I, now I just got hungry. Thanks, Carver. Appreciate that. Um, Jesse, yeah, it, honestly, it's really cool. To, it's so late, right? Um, how late the Vegas stream is is typically up. And when you're there and you're doing the, the booth and it's 12 Vegas time, you feel it. Let me tell you what. You feel it. But yeah, absolutely the perks do. far outweigh. The perks far outweigh the cons on on anything that we do. We just, I think, so I've been taking my wife to a couple of events uh, recently. The Cross Border Darts Challenge this past weekend um, being one of them. Vegas was another one. And I think that she's now starting to realize when I say that uh, I don't really get breaks from work. I, I'm really just working the whole time. I might go out to dinner just to eat food, um, but... Other than that, I really don't get to get out very much. And I, she's definitely starting to realize that um, a lot of work goes into it, no yeah. matter if we're doing uh, CDC or USA darts or anything like that. It, we're there to work. Um, it's, it's a great time. It's an amazing job to have. Uh, it's very fun work, um, but it is definitely work all on its own. I remember going to Nashville two years ago, not even knowing that the IndyCar race was racing on the streets of downtown Nashville because I never <laughs> left the hotel. And that that's a true testament. Sometimes people ask me about these travel locations and I'll sometimes book myself an extra day um, for some of these events, especially with some of the arachnid tour. Um, so like in Buffalo, no. I had, a, I purposely made sure I left the, uh, an, an extra day later so I can go to Niagara Falls and go eat chicken wings and do the whole thing. Right. But you, you're absolutely right, Sean. If anybody remembers, just listen to the last uh, day of NDA coverage from last year. That's how my voice was completely gone. And that's because I did not yep. stop talking for 12 hours a day for five days days six days however many days it was yeah you'll get used to it paul rogers in the chat what's up brother hope you're doing well and carver appreciate that as we're gonna look at some darts here eventually and Corey back right at this right time how about seven 18s just in time to zoom out yeah such a good shot at camera decided to not show it as the vision of this match is becoming clearer and clearer, seven to four scoreline, Corey Beck up on Bet Ho Brett Hollanday. Brett, again, a former Division II champ. He actually came into this match with a .12 average, a uh, better average than Corey Beck. Um, but Corey, the veteran, been playing for 30 plus years and just now starting to get on the scene with another boom goes the dynamite out of him. And Brett's probably going to follow with one of his own. Oh, They've no. been really kind of contagious on these uh, big rounds after big rounds. Yeah, these up, performances these guys are putting in here are just phenomenal. As Darren goes, what's up, brother, in the chat. So what's up, there brother? What's up, brother? Yep. My students at school are starting to do that now, so now it's lame. Okay. Now it's lame. I, um, when seventh graders are think it's cool, guess what? Adults, it's not. Okay. <laughs> Um, so let's, let's leave it alone. Let's, let's, let sketch do whatever sketch does or whatever his name is. <laughs> Fair enough. Look, look, Corey <laughs> and Brett do whatever they want to do here. I mean, both in the sixes right now, but Brett firm control with that going first advantage. Yeah, guys reminder, we have a live stream giveaway from a to Z darts.com. We haven't mentioned it very often because it's such a cool giveaway that we just want you to earn it by just putting your comment in the chat already. But you're going to hear it one more time right now. Tonight's raffle winner will receive the Nathan Aspinall Echo Soft Tip Darts in 18 grams. That's right. Those Nathan Aspinall Echo Soft Tip Darts in 18 grams featuring the titanium nitrate coating, which makes it sleek and sexy. Part of that design. So all you got to do is leave a comment in our chat. Hit that like button on our Facebook page to enter in for your chance to win those beautiful sexy sleek dart barrels did you notice during your ad read that everyone's is dancing in the background and singing along to something it's probably 
not the ad read. Well, the I don't know. With the way that they're dancing, maybe the chicken song. I love to dart. I love to dart. What is happening back there? It's it's either that. It might be uh, Bon Jovi. It's a listen. We can say it. It's it's going to be some sort of white person anthem back there yeah, in Minnesota. Yeah. Um, you know, don't stop believing. Journey. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 And we're uh, maybe yeah. even some LMFAO. I'm sweet sexy Caroline. and I know it could be a. I know, don't think a it's Sweet Caroline. Definitely. Yeah. I I thought it was Sweet Caroline from the get go, but they were dancing a little bit too much. Quiet Riot. There you go. I forgot <laughs> this. We got the old schoolers in here. Oh, now everyone. Party in the USA, Cardi B, Baby Shark. Oh, you guys are having fun with it in there. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, Sean. Uh, Jeremy, Brett is, go- or Corey is going first in this lake. Uh, Sean, I want uh, you to The know. reason why Brett is not going first because it's the PPD player advantage rule. Go ahead. I just want you to know that you should not forget. Uh, check out A to Z darts featuring. Oh, actually, hold on. Right. Before you start that, before you start that, uh, he's right. Brett should be going first in this leg. Do you notice huh. that? I did not notice that. Fun fact: Sorry, I don't now know you can go if ahead they noticed either. Do your ad read. They definitely did not. They, have they no definitely, idea. definitely did not. Uh, they're, they're, they're dancing along on there. Yeah, unfortunately, to clarify, guys, it is on the player that would have the advantage to recognize that they're supposed to go first and oh, to correct that it's seven mistake. to five. That's why seven to five, dork. Oh, uh, just kidding. <laughs> hey, guys, welcome. First time running the CSC. My name is Nick Deshera. Don't worry, guys, you won't be here this weekend for PBD Nationals. Well, don't forget, A to Z is or featuring the... <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> don't forget, A to Z is featuring the MRI Dart Series from 180, plus a special raffle. Purchase the Dart of the Month and automatically get entered into a raffle to win a set of 180 Magic Matt Mullen Darts. Raffle ends May 1st, and the winner gets their choice of Soft Tip 19 gram or Steel Tip 23 gram. You can also join in on their April, a- April, uh, April Raffle Mania to win... <laughs> Uh, to the April Raffle Mania to win even more darts prizes. All customers that purchase a set of K Flex have a chance to win a set of Target Exo Steel Tip darts. Or if you buy the Target Exo darts, you'll be entered in a raffle to win a set of the Nathan Aspinall Echo Steel Tip darts. Lastly, purchase Wait anything from what? You can win a set of Nathan Aspinall Echo Soft Tip darts tonight. Th- that that's like double Aspinall. That's Aspinall Boom. squared. Uh, lastly, ahead, if you purchase anything from the Dart World <laughs> March launch to win a set of Chris Adobe Hollywood action steel tip darts, raffle ends April 30th and winner will be announced on the A to Z darts Facebook page. Best of luck, everybody. That's a dash Z darts.com. As we get up, boom goes the dynamite right there from Brett. He needed it. He's got to have more of them. Corey here. Down 33 points. Needs to close the 16s at some point. Brilliant ad read, buddy. Brilliant. brilliant, uh, it brilliant. Was, yeah, yeah. Apple instead of April was pretty cool. Or April, whatever well, I tried. April spritz. I, I actually think that you sounded better than you thought you did, and then you made it worse by repeating it. But <laughs> I'm just, who am I? I'm just someone who's just here listening along. Uh, we'll see what's happening here from Brett Holliday. Because something is happening here. He went nine mark and then seven. Takes back the lead. Corey would have loved a triple there. Yeah, Corey. And the, Shoot at it. He's going yeah, for he it. He has to. He, he has to, right? It. When you block yourself out. No, with the higher ground. No, Corey shouldn't shoot that yeah. shot, except for the fact that both of those were hanging over top. Otherwise, I would advise Corey Fair. to just pound all three and to take the statistical advantage of 20 versus 15. Uh, in this case, though, especially with Brett missing the double on the outside, unfortunately, you expect Corey maybe Malone, grab a triple Maloney, and take Maloney it from here. Double. He's going right, right at Corey it. Corey back to get within one. Uh-oh. A great Oh, he needed dart, a though. triple, too. That's a huge dart. Yeah, that's the risk of shooting in that order. But, of course, you don't want to get too cozy on the 20s and not shoot the game winner either. So it's that trade-off. But 
Brett needs to give himself a little bit more of a favorable hand, and he knows it and is frustrated because that was not the turn he needed. I don't know if you can see the nervous energy back there with a couple of the patrons watching along as Corey Beck does get within one eight to five lead. And we had it earlier. Charles asking, how do you get into the CSC Chandra series? So, <clears throat> oh boy. Uh, well, Charles, do you want to know how to become eligible to play in major APD events like the CSC Chandra series? Boy, do I. Well, players become eligible for those by playing in PPD leagues and daily remote tournaments or DRTs. Leagues are starting daily. Get involved by going to dartstoc.com and checking out the map. The map will show any location with G3 boards within the PPD system. If you're not seeing anything in your area, just have your vendor contact them on the website. From there, you can sign up for leagues on the website. It doesn't take a ridiculous amount of games to be eligible either. Consistently playing one league a week will keep you eligible for this event in the future. Again, go to dartstoc.com to get signed up today. Sorry, I wasn't listening. Can you say it from the top? No. <laughs> What's running through Brett's Which mind actually, right now? Uh, expletive deleted. <laughs> I would hope he's just having a short he's memory. Saying, but beep, 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 beep. Oh, Corey's just doing everything right at the moment here. Let's be honest. He, he's just playing phenomenal and not really having too many bad rounds. And the rounds he has had, Brett Hall and he's kind of let him get away with it a little bit. That right there is is Brett's night, right? Uh, just not hitting the triples in, in times where he needs to. And it it's unlucky, is honestly. Corey's been hitting the dead center of those triples, though. So the talent level as well from Corey is he raises it up here to a 6.67, just trying to shut the door. And in this one here. So here you go. This could be for the match right now. You would certainly like it to be. Bullseye. Double. Oh, just barely missing on that last dart. What a well-thrown dart. He almost got him, but he will be back. And he'll be back with only needing one bullseye to be the king of the legends. And just for tonight, he gets it done. As you see right away, Brett claps for him, gives him a big hug. Corey, a 6.0 in that last leg. You can't say he didn't deserve it, man. He shot fire yeah, all night long. Phenomenal. Uh, well done. Phenomenal stuff there and great performance from Corey Beck. Just really bringing it out, all things considered there. And 13 and a half was the line on the nine marks. It ended up at 12. So just barely missing on that. that mark there. But just good stuff from Corey Beck. And Brett Hollanday, it was just a timing issue tonight, if you ask me. He, he wasn't really that far off. He was kind of in the mix the whole time uh, and then just barely doesn't collect at the end. I mean, what are your thoughts on that, Sean? I mean, Corey shot great. He he did the opposite, right? He capitalized when he needed to. He hit more nines than Brett did. When Brett hit a nine, he followed it up with a nine. It's just he stayed with him. It was well done from Minnesota, and it brings up another Minnesota battle next week between uh, Tyler Henze and Corey Beck. So uh, the wisdom, the experience of Corey Beck taking on the youth of uh, Mr. Tyler Henze, and I can't wait for it. I think that's going to be another person that Tyler is going to get some different than expected shots from time to time just to see how he reacts to it. Um, it worked for Mike Scarborough. We'll see if uh, if Tyler's learned anything from that against the Wiley veterans and can figure it out there. Oh, yeah, my I, gosh. Sorry, well, I just looked at you. <laughs> you love it. You love it. You love it. You love it. All right. Perfect. I, I'll dye the mustache, too, if you're not careful there, Sean. All right. But, I, well, you know what? That might look better. It can't. It, never mind. It, can't I, it might look better. 
No, you I do you put. You do you put. I, I can't even look at the chat. Guys, this has been a phenomenal show, and you're <laughs> absolutely right. I'm excited to see how Corey Beck faces Tyler Hensey. Uh Tyler, of course, really not going to be happy with his last performance in the stream, and will want to amend that. And both these guys are going to want that shot at Scarborough. So very, very interesting stuff here. And a huge shout out to the Legends Bar crew. I mean, they had a whole bunch of people out there, and no matter what, they were having fun. So hats off to you guys um, for giving that uh, Union Lake Eagles type atmosphere tonight i loved every bit of it i missed the riding the horse yeah. though. what happened to the pony that's why i want to know yeah same i don't even know what you're talking about but guys <laughs> what a night uh the wells i think definitely brought a lot of people to the well um that's why there's a lot of people sleeping with the stream still up so thank you for the numbers <laughs> as you uh as will made you conk out there a little bit uh earlier in this evening but a uh, big victory from Corey, and I'm expected to see uh, him give Tyler a very tough battle. I think that could be a really good one that might go all the way to the distance. Certainly. And just to reiterate one last time, no CSC next week. It is postponed to the week yep. after uh, for NDA Team Dart, but there will still be all-star triples on the Partners Pro Darts pages. And I believe Eagle Eye Sports, but don't quote me on that one as well. So you'll be watching some great streams this weekend from USA Darts, from Partners Pro Darts. Make sure to share the love, spread the love. And of course, we appreciate you guys tuning in as always, but that pretty much does it for us here, Sean. So for all of us here, we're going to be bidding you adieu. Sean Green, Nick Deshera, and Will Stewart in Vegas somewhere. Have a good night, guys. Take care, everybody. See you in two weeks.